Hi guys, so happy Tuesday. Um, if you have been to school, you have picked up this um, packet of work and included in your packet was also this schedule of how you can go about your days throughout the week. Um, you'll notice that the um, things that change the most are math and um, in later days, language arts. Language arts and math are going to change every day what your activities are. The rest of them will be the same. So today, April 14th, your math activity is to work on our Chapter 9 review. So I have that here, and you should have this in your packet also. So if you haven't pulled this out, go ahead and do that now. And then we're going to go ahead and review some of the vocabulary from Chapter 9 because it's been a while since we um, have talked about properties and equations. So again, for this lesson, you're going to need your Chapter 9 review. That's pages 557 to 559, um, and actually that's a typo. It's 557 to 558. We are only doing the front and back of that first page of the review. So I believe that's all that's included in your packet. So as a quick review, your um, review worksheet, um, the front side of it is a vocabulary check. So I thought that it was important that we go over um, some of the vocabulary from this past chapter. Um, so the first vocabulary word is the associative property of multiplication. So as a reminder, the associative property is the one that we talk about that I say this is the one that has the parentheses. So we use parentheses to group our numbers. So the grouping of our numbers, whatever numbers the parentheses are around, does not change the product. So it doesn't matter which numbers my parentheses are around, my product is going to be the same. So you can see here that um, I have the numbers 4 times 2 times 3 on both sides of um, this equation here. So 4 times 2 times 3 is here, and 4 times 2 times 3 is here. But you'll see that my parentheses on this one are around 4 times 2, and this one they're around 2 times 3. So if I were following this one using PEMDAS, I know that my parentheses go first. So 4 times 2 is 8, and then I'm just going to bring down that times 3, and 8 times 3 is 24. On this side, I see the parentheses around 2 and 3. I know if I have parentheses, I have to multiply those numbers first. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then I just brought down that 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So down here, I tell you it doesn't matter what numbers I put the parentheses around. I still got 24 as my product. So remember, associative property is the one about parentheses. It doesn't matter which numbers I group. I still get the same answer. Okay? The next one is the distributive property. This is the one where I decompose one of the factors. Decompose means break apart. So I'm allowed to decompose or break apart one of my factors into smaller numbers that are easier to work with. Once I decompose that first product, I'm going to multiply each of those numbers by the other um, factor, and then I'm going to add my products together. So an example of that is 12 times 4. 12 is a tricky number for me to work with because it's big. So I'm going to decompose or break apart 12 into 10 plus 2 because 10 plus 2 is 12. So now I'm going to distribute this 4 to both of these add-ins. So I'm going to do 4 times 10 and 4 times 2. So I have both of those down here, 10 times 4 and 2 times 4. 10 times 4 is 40. 2 times 4 is 8, and if I add those together, I get 48, and 12 times 4 is 48. So remember, you're just going to decompose one of the factors, probably your biggest one or the one that's trickiest for you to work with, and you're going to want to decompose that into two numbers that you know are easy to multiply for you. Okay? This is another one that um, tricked us in um, our lessons in class was the difference between equations and expressions. So I wrote down here, both um, equations and expressions use variables, okay? Remember, a variable is a symbol or a letter that stands for the unknown, okay? So an equation is a number sentence that does use an equal sign. If you have an equation, it's for sure going to have an equal sign. You can see here, here's my example, 4 times 2 equals m. Okay, 4 times 2 equals m. m is my variable, but 4 times 2 equals m is my equation. 
Okay, an expression is different because this an expression does not have an equal sign. Instead, it has a combination of both numbers and um, that's not supposed to say expressions, and a combination of numbers and variables. Okay, so you can see here, um, I'm also this is not supposed to say variables, it's supposed to say a combination of numbers and let's see if I can um, write on here. Um, I'm not sure that I can. Um, it doesn't look like it. So it's a combination of numbers and operations. So mm, here we go. Why is that here? <sighs> okay. So here's my example of an expression. 5 times B plus 3. So you can see I have two different operations happening here. I have multiplication and addition, but I also have my numbers happening here, okay? So that's the end of our vocabulary review. So moving down here to my um, document camera, I have here the same review that you have in your packet, okay? So you should be able to fairly simply now fill out your um, crossword puzzle with all of these different clues. Um, we can go over the answers to these in your in our Zoom meeting tomorrow at 9. So instead of going over this with you right now, I'm going to flip the page and I'm going to do one example of each of these types of questions here because these are the ones that you're responsible for. Um, and then if you get stuck on any of these, remember you can go back and rewatch the part of the video with um, the vocabulary review, or you can bring your questions to Zoom tomorrow. So if you have this piece of paper, go ahead and flip it over. And now I'm on the back side, page 558. Okay, and I'm just going to do one of the questions with you, and then you are responsible for doing the other one on your own. If you get stuck on any of these, just go ahead and circle it, circle the number, and then you can bring this question to Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to do this one with you, and then you're going to be responsible for this one. I'm going to do this one with you, then you're going to be responsible for this one, all the way down the page. Okay, so these directions say use the distributive property to find each product. Okay, distributive property means I'm going to decompose one of these numbers. I think I'm going to decompose 9, and I'm going to decompose 9 into 5 and 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, let's see, this got blurry, is I'm going to rewrite this question using my two new add-ins. Okay, so I'm going to write the 5 first, and I know I have to multiply this 5 by 7 still, so I have 5 times 7. Okay, and I'm going to add that. Two, I've already used this five, so now I need to use four, four times seven. Okay, now I need to multiply each of these numbers. Five times seven, I know, is 35. And four times seven is 28. And so now that I need to add these two numbers together, and 35 plus 28, I know, is 63. If you didn't know that, you would need to go into your margins and line up those numbers and do your addition on the side here. Don't forget to show me your work, okay? So for this one, you're gonna pick one of these numbers to decompose and then show me your work just like I did here for number eight, okay? Number nine says use parentheses to group two factors, then find each product. That means I'm using the associative property here. Okay, remember it doesn't matter which numbers I put my parentheses around. So I'm going to pick the ones that work best for me. So I'm going to do, how about put my parentheses around 3 times 4. Okay, that way I know whatever I get here, I'm just multiplying by 1, and that's easy for me. So 3 times 4 I know is 12. And 12 times 1, I just brought this one down, is 12. Okay. This one here says use numbers and operations to write each phrase as an expression. OK, 
Okay. So with an expression, let's go back to my slideshow. Okay. Expressions use a combination of numbers and this was supposed to say operations. Okay. Do I have an equal sign? Nope. I don't have an equal sign. So that means that my um, expression here should also not have an equal sign. So five people equally divide $45. Okay, so I'm going to circle, I'm going to use my cubes and I'm going to circle my two numbers, five and 45. Equally divide, that sounds like keywords to me that tell me I'm going to be dividing. Okay, and so I have five and division and 45, but I can't write them in this order because in division, the biggest number comes first. Okay, so I have my $45. My keyword tells me that I'm going to be dividing and by five people. Okay, this is my expression. There is no equal sign. There is no answer. You are done with this. Okay, so remember over here, you should not have an equal sign. You should not have an answer. Okay, then Number 13 says, evaluate each expression if A equals 4 and B equals 5. Evaluate is another word for solve. Okay, so we're going to solve each expression if A equals 4 and B equals 5. I'm just going to plug in those numbers to this um, expression. I don't have a B here, so I don't need to put 5 in this one, but I do have 3 plus A. A equals 4, so instead of 3 plus A, I'm going to write 3 plus 4, and 3 plus 4 equals 7. Okay, you're going to do the same thing for 14, but notice that you are using B for this one. Okay, number 15, 16, and 17, I'm just going to do 15 with you, it says write an equation. That means you need an equal sign. A fun way to think about that is if you get confused between expression and equation. Equation has EQUA, equa, which is the same as equal sign. So you can think about it that way, okay, if you get confused. So I know I need an equal sign for this question. Okay, let's stop being blurry. There we go. So I'm going to read this question out loud. I'm going to circle my numbers, box my keywords, underline. If there's a question, use my cubes. Okay, if there are seven cars on a roller coaster with three seats in each and two seats are empty, then M seats are full. Whoa, that's a big one, okay? So I circled all my numbers. You'll also notice I circled M because M is my variable and that is gonna be some sort of number that I would be solving for if up here it said evaluate or solve and this for these directions, I'm just writing the equation. I don't even have to solve it if I didn't want to, but of course you can. So I'm gonna take this step by step and figure it out slowly. So if there are seven cars on a roller coaster with three seats each, when we see each, we know we're multiplying. So I know I'm multiplying three or seven times three because of this first part of the sentence here, okay? And two seats are empty. Empty tells me that whatever I have here, I'm going to have to take away these two that are empty to figure out how many kids are, are, are on the roller coaster, how many of the seats are full. So I need to figure out this part first. So I'm even going to put parentheses around this to tell me I need to do that first. And then I'm going to subtract out the two seats that are empty because they're not there, right? If I have seven cars on the roller coaster, with three seats in each and two seats are empty. So this here tells me how many seats are possible. Me taking away the two or to show that there are two seats that are empty and then to figure out how many are full, that's my answer, which is the variable M. Okay, if that didn't make sense to you, you could draw a picture. There are seven cars on a roller coaster. So I'm gonna draw my seven cars over here. Always, always, always remember you can draw a picture if one, two, three, four, five, if that's confusing for you. So here are my seven cars on the roller coaster. Each one has three seats. Mm -hmm. So I'm drawing three circles in each of my seven 
cars on the roller coaster and only two of those seats are empty. So I'm gonna cross out one and cross out two. When I'm crossing out, that means I'm subtracting. So you can see here, I have seven times three, I had 21 dots and I subtracted two and that's gonna give me how many dots or how many seats are still there, okay? So you're gonna do your best to do 16 and 17. And then tomorrow, if you're still stuck, make sure you circle the questions that you're stuck on, like I just did here, so that you can ask me during our Zoom meeting tomorrow, Wednesday, from 9 to 9.30, okay? So I will see you then. I hope that this was helpful for you.